Now, when you went through the homework, you probably noticed that they were using symbols like rho, lambda, and sigma. So we need to understand what these mean. Well, these are densities. So we have to review the concept of density. We learned about one type of density last term. You learned about the volume density of mass. Or maybe we just call that the volume mass density. Volume densities are symbolized with this symbol rho. And you remember that this tells you how crowded the mass is in a certain volume. So that would be based on how much mass there is in a given volume. Well, we're not going to be focusing on mass density anymore. Now we're focusing on charge densities. So now all of these stand for charge densities. So this would be the volume charge density. Still using rho. But now, what should we put in the numerator? Charge. Yeah, and what's our symbol for charge? Q. Right capital lowercase q. And we're going to still put v on the bottom because this is a volume density. So now this is telling us how uh, crowded the charges are in a certain volume. What would be the units then for rho? Um, meters cubed. Good. Except what are the units for q? I'm sorry, coulomb. That's right. The symbol is q and the units are coulombs per cubic meter. Now, this lambda here stands for the linear charge density. Actually, why don't I put these in these order? So here's sigma. This stands for the area charge density, or surface area, or surface charge density. Surface or area charge density because uh, sigma is the Greek letter for S, so for surface area. What do you think the formula would be for that? Um, Q over area. Yeah, Q over A. This tells us how crowded the charges are in a given area rather than a given volume. And this would be the linear charge density, because lambda is the Greek letter for L. And that formula would be Good. Maybe the denominator here is a little bit weirder, but we need to just have a measure of the linear distance that we're, uh, that we're considering. This is Here we are looking at the volume we're considering, here we're looking at the area we're considering, well here we want the linear distance. Um, so we might use D for distance, or maybe sometimes we might use R or delta R for distance, depending on the problem. Uh, by the way, then, what would be the units going back to sigma? The units for sigma would be? And the units for this would be? All right, these are basic concepts, so basic that you wouldn't, shouldn't have to look these up in our cheat sheet. We should have, be, be able to figure out what the, uh, the units and the concepts are for these. Now, how are these useful? Well, suppose that we know, say, the area that we're focusing on, and we know what its surface charge density is. How could you figure out the total amount of charge? Well, yeah, you can see here that Q is A times sigma. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, so the usefulness of a density is it allows us to figure out how much charge we're dealing with. Why is that so important? Well, remember that Gauss's law depends on the enclosed charge. So very often when you're using Gauss's law, one of the steps will be to use the density to figure out what the enclosed charge is. So oftentimes you'll have to rearrange these formulas in terms of charge. This formula should make good sense based on the units. The area is in uh, square meters, and sigma is in coulombs per square meters. So that cancels out to give us coulombs, which are the units for charge. So you can almost do this without the formulas, just focusing on the units.
Now, um, what we are working on in Gauss's law is we're given a source of charge, and we have to figure out the electric field that it's generating. Well, last time that we met, we did some simple cases. We did a point charge, and we figured out the electric field, and we also did spherical distributions of charge. Well, what we have here, uh, so we talked about spherical symmetry. Now, the other two types of symmetry are line symmetry and plane symmetry. Well, here for this problem, this is difficult to draw, but this is an infinite slab. So this is a slab that has a certain set thickness. So it has a thickness from negative d over 2 to positive d over 2. So what's the total thickness? D. Yeah, d. It has a finite thickness. Um, however, these sides go on forever. We can't draw them as infinite, but actually this, this slab is moving forever to the left and forever to the right and forever up and forever down. It's only um, finite into and out of the board. So it's an infinite slab. What type of symmetry would you say this has, spherical, line, or plane? Um, plane? Yeah, this has plane symmetry. It's not just a line, um, it's actually, uh, uh, it actually has an entire plane of symmetry. So we have, all, we'll have to see how to apply Gauss's law to that. All right, um, so uh, let's think about what type of electric field this is going to generate. <coughs> well, what do you think would be the direction of the electric field vectors relative to this? This we can kind of figure out based on our common sense. Now, let's say that um, this has a positive charge density, although they didn't say so. So what would be the direction of the electric field vectors? Yeah, out of the blackboard. Yeah. That is, the electric field vector that's coming from this face would be pointing out of the blackboard. How about the electric field vector, field vector coming from the, the rear face, which I can't draw? Um, like behind? Yeah, it would be pointing, yeah. It would be pointing out that way? Yeah. Now, are the electric field vectors going to be pointing towards this slab or away from this slab? Now here we should maybe go back to our flow chart. We're trying to figure out the direction of the electric field based on the source charge. So let's see what the flow chart says. It says that it depends on whether your source charge is positive or negative, here above the left-hand arrow. Remember that electric fields point away from positive source charges and towards negative source charges. Well, we decided to assume that this was a positive charge density. So should the electric field vectors be pointing towards the slab or away from the slab? Yeah. So we should imagine the electric field vectors emerging out of the blackboard from the front face, and the electric field vectors are going away from the slab into the blackboard from the rear face, which would be difficult for me to draw. So these are not the electric field vectors here. These are just indications that the slab goes on forever. The electric field is perpendicular to the board. How about if the density was why negative? Is, I'm sorry. Why is the electric field only perpendicular to the... That's a good question. I should have mentioned that. Well, because of symmetry, um, yeah, you're right. It has to be perpendicular. It can't be at an angle, because if it was at an angle, how would we decide whether it should be slanting to the left or slanting to the right? Well, this point over here has an infinite amount of slab to its left and an infinite amount of slab to its right, and the two sides are identical and symmetrical to each other. Um, and for that matter, it has an infinite amount of slab above it and an infinite amount of slab below it. So there's no, there's no way we can make an argument for why the electric field should be slanting left or slanting right or slanting up or slanting down. That's where we use the plane symmetry idea. Because this is symmetrical in a plane, there's no way we can argue that the line should be slanting relative to the plane. Instead, the only way to be symmetrical is to be coming out perpendicular to it. On each face? On the front face and the back face. Why only on the front and the back? Uh, let's see. Or uh, maybe I'm getting confused here. Um, Oh, because those are the only faces. Remember, this is not a face. Remember that in actuality, the slab is moving on infinitely in this direction, right? The slab just extends infinitely in this direction. That's what this arrow is supposed to represent. I can't draw it going infinitely. I've got to stop eventually. But this actually goes on forever in this direction. So it doesn't make any sense to figure out what the direction of the electric field is emerging from the left or the right face, because there is no left or right face. It just goes on infinitely there. And there's no top or bottom face either. Yeah, so again, this is not an electric field error. It just indicates the face is going on forever. 